When we see someone with a double chin, we have to very clearly understand the problem that's causing the double chin. If a person has a very small chin itself and it's set back, it may end up giving them a double chin, or if they, they get slight laxity of the skin, it can give them a double chin. So sometimes we have to address the double chin starting from most to least surgery, is that if some people are developing an aging face, we can help them out by performing some sort of facial tightening procedure to pull things up and back. If it's a chin issue specifically, sometimes we need to put a chin implant in to bring the chin forward, which will tighten things up. Or, if it's redundancy of tissue and fat in the upper neck, sometimes we will perform chin liposuction, whereby the patient doesn't have to be put to sleep, put a little bit of freezing in the upper part of the neck, and typically we'd make a teeny little incision here, one behind each ear, perform liposuction crossing the area, and remove a very careful and exactly calculated amount of fat. We don't want to take out too much fat because if you take out too much fat, it makes the neck look aged, whereas if you take a very small amount out, it can look fantastic. And on the other hand, sometimes we have an aging face patient who's got a bit of fat and a small chin, so in those patients, the best result may be achieved by performing a facelift, putting a chin implant, and taking a teeny bit of fat out. Back in the early 80s, people were very aggressively taking fat out of the face, but over the next 10 and 20 years, we found out that that was somewhat inappropriate, and we have a number of patients now who come back saying, yeah, I had something done 20 years ago, and now instead of being 45, I look like I'm 85, and that's because they've had too much fat taken out of their face. Fat is good.